All right, Ilya Ponomarev is a former Russian member uh, of parliament. He was a member of the Duma, and he now lives in exile in Kiev. Uh, and Ilya, welcome. You are a member of the Freedom of Russia Legion. Is that right? I am political representative so, uh, of, of the Legion. Political representative. So they have an armed wing and yes. they have a political wing. It sounds like the IRA. Yes. <laughs> uh not exactly but there are several resemblances <laughs> okay let, let, tell me about this group i mean they they have just done a raid let's start with the news they've just done a raid across the the border into belgorod which is inside russia what happened there because the russians say they eliminated some 70 fighters they called them terrorists um and they put down the, this attack very quickly what really happened no, uh, in, in, in reality, uh, obviously what uh, Kremlin is saying is uh, all fake and it's all false. They uh, were producing some fake evidence. Uh, they were distributing pictures and even videos of some uh, blown up vehicles, which are different than the vehicles that uh, the Legion and the Russian volunteer corps are actually using. And we showcase this as because they... Uh, have different type of camouflage on it, so uh, it's it's not their equipment at all. Um, but uh, what was actually happening is uh, there was uh, uh, an initial raid into Russian territory uh, in Belgorod region, um, uh, and which is like northeast uh, for people who want to understand geographically where it is northeast of uh, Ukraine, so more or less uh, on the way to Moscow. Uh, and uh, there was an incursion inside uh, in the first days. In the first day, uh, four villages uh, were liberated, uh, and uh, they went into the district center, Graivoran, uh, uh, which is like the uh, basic municipality. So it's it's a small town already, not a village. And then uh, it appeared that several of uh, the secondary attacks uh, that were conducted in the different other places of the border were so successful so that altogether they eventually joined and that appeared to be a, a, a strip of land uh, which uh, lasted more than 40 kilometers in parallel to the Russian-Ukrainian border. So it's a pretty large territory which eventually went under control uh, of our liberating forces. Uh, uh, alas, uh, uh, today it was reported that we suffered certain uh, casualties, but obviously they are not uh, uh, that uh, high as the Russian uh, military reported. Uh, two people uh, uh, were, were killed in action and uh, 10 were wounded. Uh, uh, before uh, today, uh, uh, yesterday, there was no, no casualties. The, the Russians say that they chased them back onto the Ukrainian side of the border and that they eliminated them. Well, that's, that's, that's all crap. You know, it's not true. It's just simply not true. Uh, uh, yeah, we control the territory uh right now there is a certain military game going on there because uh, uh the beloved kremlin uh he sent uh, their ill famous general uh mr lapin uh, uh who was commander in chief of uh, the russian military which were retreating from Kharkiv region uh so there was commander of the whole group which was situated uh, in 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 that sector yes. of uh, ukraine so he lost everything there, uh, but it shows that it's a high military rank. So it's it's a high commander. It's, this this it's, is uh, highly em this is mm -hmm. highly embarrassing for the Russians, isn't it, to have a, mm -hmm. an attack um, on their soil and uh, one yeah, that absolutely. just doesn't go on for a day but goes on for several days. Yeah, absolutely. So they sent this three star general, uh, and he was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a, was, uh, well, our guys were actually filming him from ambush, uh, and uh, it was shown how he is commanding uh, just one platoon of soldiers. He would say like, "Go right, go left," you know. So uh, this three stars general that shows the uh, demise of uh, Russian military in that area.
So where where is the Russian military? Where where are the border guards? I mean, why weren't they able to to stop this attack more quickly? Are they just so overcommitted uh, in Ukraine that they don't have the ability to guard the Russian border? Yeah, that's exactly the case. So border guards uh, they were smashed uh, immediately uh, during the very first attack. Uh, police and uh, Guardia, you know, so all these internal uh, Siloviki type people they just fled. I uh, didn't put up a fight at all. Uh, uh, there was one uh, uh, military uh, unit uh, which uh, went into fight but uh, suffered heavy losses and uh, and retreated because uh, it was not enough. And uh, they're right now relocating 74th Brigade uh, from uh, Ukraine. Actually, you know, what, what uh, has happened is... Uh, uh, is a very simple thing. Um, uh, the West uh, was speaking so much that uh, they are against uh, Ukraine to go into Russia, and uh, Zelensky is generally against of going into Russia. Ukrainian military command wants to liberate its soil, but they, they really don't want to go into Russia. So Putin uh, was totally relaxed. Uh, so he took away all the, the protection from the border and relocated them all uh, into Ukraine. Right now, 97% of Russian military uh, is in uh, Ukraine. But uh, we Russians, we never gave an obligation not to uh, fight for our country um, and to liberate our land. Uh, so uh, they were taken totally by surprise. If, if we would have more uh, uh, force, just uh, physically more people, we could have go all the way to Belgorod and maybe further, you know, we will not be stopped. Tell me about this group in terms of um, the Russian, the Liberty of Russian Legion and the Russian Volunteer Corps. Um, are, there are two separate groups here that are operating independently? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, two separate groups. Uh, 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 they were even uh, arguing with each other until recently, but uh, uh, finally, uh, a while ago, we made uh, eventually a, a good and working alliance so that they managed to do a joint uh, operation in uh, in Russia, which is a very good news, you know, to the country, to Russian opposition, which is always fighting with each other bitterly, you know, uh, people uh, at the front, uh, the actual fighters, the, uh, 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 people who actually do care about the future, you, you know, they know how to you know, make how, how deals big, with each how other. How big are these two groups, do you think? How many... How many soldiers are there? The Legion is four battalions and uh, RPC is one battalion. We cannot de disclose the exact number of uh, people, but everybody who is at least a bit familiar with the military uh, terminology can calculate. So it is the battalion and, and, and do the math. Battalion size is uh, 300 to 1500 soldiers, each battalion. Mm -hmm. If it's a regular sized battalion, yeah, more or less. All right. Or less. Who who is funding this group, and and who is who is allowing them off the leash, if I can use that term? Did, first of all, did the Ukrainian authorities give a nod, or give the okay for this group to go and attack Russia? No, oh, but look, uh, both of these groups. They are part of uh, Ukrainian military at the end of the day. They are very much autonomous, but they still report to uh, Ukraine's military command because they are part of international legion as foreign nationals. So they are part of international legion and international legion uh, is part of Ukrainian armed forces. Then by extension, by extension, Russia will say that Ukraine attacked inside, inside Russia. Well, they can uh, say whatever they want to say, but there was not a single Ukrainian national on the territory of Russia and not a single Ukrainian national was involved in the preparation of the attack, of the facilitation of the attack whatsoever. So it was all done uh, by Russians and uh, uh, Russia all the time was using uh, proxy uh, forces in, in Ukraine, in, in Donbass, so it's their tactics. Uh, uh, Ukraine's uh, involvement is way less than that, uh, but uh, I think that the uh, State Department uh, in the U.S. made the correct uh, statement that uh, uh, the West uh, uh, has never encouraged Ukraine uh, to go to Russia, but at the end of the day, that's Ukraine's business, 
uh, of how to defend itself. And uh, if Ukraine is supporting uh, Russian resistance, I think is the right way is the right way to do. Ukrainians will not go into Russia, will never occupy Russia, will never fight with Russians inside Russia. But uh, we, the Russian freedom fighters, we can do this. We are in our own right. When you say they're supporting, are they supporting financially and are they giving arms and ammunition and vehicles? And are, were some of those vehicles American as well? well they uh, do the training. They are giving arms, but uh, uh, they're giving some simple uh, arms. It's not uh, sophisticated machinery, not sophisticated tools. Uh, so they are equipping uh, uh, like light infantry in the same way like light infantry is being equipped uh, within the international legion. The rest uh, we procure uh, during fighting. And uh, uh, there are a lot of trophy vehicles that were taken during fights in uh, Kharkiv region when the Russian military uh, were retreating. So with the, the, the legion and RPC, RPC was especially involved there. They took uh, so-called BMPs, uh, the uh, infantry vehicle, base infantry vehicle of Russian military, BTRs, uh, uh, the base armored uh, vehicle, and uh, several tanks. Are there American vehicles as well that were used in the attack? Look, uh, uh, as just like cars, could be American cars. Like you know, Humvees. Like, could, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it could be, it could be, it could be different, but uh, it's not uh, uh, an assault uh, weapon like the tank, uh, or it's not HIMARS, you know. So it's not something which is like really uh, special. There are a lot of self-made uh, armored vehicle vehicles uh, in in that group. I know that they were using some Canadian cars to modernize them and to use them uh, as uh, as uh, as the tool for, for moving themselves. Uh, the tanks, uh, that was uh, important, but the tanks were Russian tanks. Is there funding by the CIA or by the Americans of this group? Uh, you know, uh, again, the West is so cautious uh, there. They don't want to do nothing. Uh, how many times we were talking to uh, uh, different uh, people in the United States, in, in Great Britain, in, in Europe, that uh, guys, at the end of the day, it's our common problem with the current Russian regime, and uh, it's aggressive. Uh, it has nukes. Uh, 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 if uh, they would defeat Ukraine, they would go further. Um, uh, uh, NATO openly said that they are adversaries, but so what? Uh, nobody is doing nothing to replace them, and I think that uh, at the end of the day, it has to be done by. Uh, Ukrainians in alliance with Eastern Europeans because uh, they have high stakes uh, there. They don't want any more any containment uh, policy. They don't want any more uh, to be the border countries. They want uh, uh, the empire empire to be uh, destroyed. They uh, want Russia to be a part of, of a family of civilized nations. Uh, the, they don't want to fight Russia any longer. They don't want to see the threat there. And that's why I think that we are the natural allies. Unfortunately, again, um, the recognition of this thing it's, uh, is coming pretty slowly. Tell me what the goal is of these, these organizations. I mean, what, this, this starts with a border skirmish and some attack on villages. How far do you think that this can go? And what is your, what is your ultimate goal? Well, uh, frankly speaking, uh, I think that in this particular circumstances, again, <laughs> there was this uh, success uh, uh, was uh, pretty sudden. <laughs> I was thinking that you know it would it would be you know uh, just uh, uh, an intelligence through fighting, uh, a re a re a reconnaissance uh, mission, but um, it went so well. But still, I, I don't think that the uh, Legion and RVC even combined that they have enough capacity to hold this territory for a long time. I would very much want to, and the guys would very much want to. And uh, the fact that we liberate a piece of our land and we put our flag there, uh, you know, it's great. But I don't think that uh, this time uh, uh, it would stay uh, long enough. But uh, the next opportunity would definitely come. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, we see how the major offensive would go uh, uh, in Ukraine, uh, if it would be happening as uh, I expect it to happen, and uh, that what Ukrainian military command expects it to happen. I think that uh, 
the time when uh, the Russian regime would start to collapse, uh, it's not uh, very much far away. And uh, in, the, in this situation, we would need the legion uh, to actually make a jump to Moscow. The, Putin is your ultimate target, and you actually believe that his regime will collapse in the wake of what? The, 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 the counterattack by the Ukrainians, if successful? Uh, yeah, I think that by the time when Ukrainians would uh, uh, retake Crimea, I think that's his Achilles tendon, and I think that it would not survive uh, this event. We will see, obviously, but uh, the understanding that the war is ultimately lost, uh, finally lost, you know, irrevocably lost, uh, that's the, uh, the, uh, the trigger point, uh, because the current elites, they still tend to say, okay, maybe somehow, maybe the West would get tired, uh, uh, of all those events, maybe uh, they would agree to some type of frozen conflict, and in the situation we can return to a certain degree of business as usual. So when there are no hopes, then uh, the only way is to uh, replace this guy, and when they would start doing replacements, uh, they would not be able to hold the situation as is. Replace this guy Putin, you're saying? And yeah, you absolutely. don't believe that this is leading to a frozen conflict? Do you think that, uh, from what you understand, and you have good connections in the military there in Ukraine, that you you believe that their fight to retake Eastern Ukraine uh, will be highly successful and they can reclaim some of it, all of it? Um, I think it's more probable to reclaim Crimea. I think that it's uh, harder um, uh, to retake Donbass militarily. Um, it's too dense, you know, and a lot of fortifications there. And again, the border is transparent. So for, for many reasons, I think that uh, Crimea is easier uh, than uh, Donbass. But we will uh, see. Anyway, uh, Crimea is way more symbolically important uh, than Donbass. Russians, they don't care about Donbass. You know, it's like it's Russian propaganda we're saying all this. And that uh, Crimea is a sort of a sacred land, you know, it's... Uh, um, a place of military glory, you know, Sebastopol and all this kind of stuff. But uh, Donbass, okay, so uh, you know, we can help them, but, you know, they have no uh, symbolic meaning for Russians. You know, it's one thing to say that you're associated with a group um, that is, you know, freedom fighting and wants to bring about positive change in Russia. But you know that some of these members are, are so-called Russian ultranationalists, neo-Nazis. One of them uh denis nikitin he's a, he's a well-known russian neo-nazi are you comfortable with with supporting this group and who they are um first of all uh rvc uh is one group and i'm not affiliated with it and uh it's a smaller group um uh, legion is way larger um uh, uh, secondly uh um, you remember how uh, Mr. Churchill once uh, was saying when he made an alliance with Stalin, he said that I am ready to uh, partner with devil if it would help me to defeat Hitler. And uh, I think that uh, right now uh, there is no threat coming from this uh, far right people um, because they are not large in numbers, uh, but they are good fighters uh, and they are on the right side of the history at the moment. And uh, then when uh, we retake Russia, we would, uh, we already agreed with them that we need to create a democratic system where citizens would decide uh, whom they want to see in the government and which direction uh, they want to go and let them vote and let them speak and let things develop the way they want to do it. Uh, anyway, uh, even with those uh, right-wing guys, uh, they have proven since 2014 uh, that they are anti-imperialistic, uh, that they are for uh, self-governing of, uh, of the people, grassroots, um, and uh, that they don't want empire to exist any longer. So that's, uh, that's what matters at this very moment. So uh, at this very moment, we are allies, and I think it's counterproductive to dig into each other political uh, biographies. Here and now, what matters? Last question to you. What can we expect next? And I know I, I asked it before, but do you think that you'll see attacks in Moscow itself and, and that this group is capable 
of, of pushing further and launching spectacular attacks inside Russia? I uh, would very much want to see this year Black Sea uh, from the southern bank of Crimea. And uh, so that by winter time is the right time, you know, by winter time to get to Moscow. Moscow. Mm -hmm. Ilya, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thanks for having me and always a pleasure talking to you.